Hi everyone, I'm Voodoo Val and I did the Choose Your Edit Photoshop Challenge Halloween Edition. You voted on themes and I'll be adding Graveyard and Jack-O-Lantern into my piece. If you want to join me in creating a fun and spooky Halloween piece in Photoshop of your own, use hashtag PSHalloween. If you need a boost of creativity, stay tuned and follow along with me. When I first begin a piece, I like to start by blocking in some sketchy lines so that I know exactly what it is I am looking to accomplish in my piece and then start blocking in some very large shapes. This is an experimentation phase where nothing has to look perfect. The goal is to get your idea down on the canvas, so don't worry too much about how clean things are. I recommend using a large, chunky brush for this. You can also see that I like to apply a lot of sketchy elements into other shapes using clipping masks by just sketching out a little bit of texture and shapes that I like and then applying them to that clipping mask and warping and transforming it into the shape uh, that I want to apply it to. After that, I like to refine the concept. So I group everything together and turn that group down on a lower opacity so I can keep an eye on my initial sketch concept while sort of re-illustrating things in a more cleaner fashion over the top. I've got my shapes in here to suggest my ground, my trees in the background, adding in my bushes. I like to do all of these different elements on different layers as well to uh, be able to come in later and add a lot more depth, color, atmosphere in between each layer uh, and create a lot more distance within the piece. I'm starting to pay a lot more attention here to the values I'm using as well, um, and I introduce a much softer brush in effort to start giving my concept a little bit more atmosphere, adding tinier details such as flowers, longer plants, and things to suggest that there's a little bit more going on in the piece. Then I start adding color. If you're like me and you need a starting point when it comes to selecting a color palette and using it, I highly recommend going to Adobe Color at color.adobe.com to download a great color palette to work from. For a large scene like this, I like to actually place my color palette in a thin strip at the top of my canvas in order to make sampling colors a lot easier. I often select colors and use my color panel to tweak shades as needed and add my colors to the scene using clipping masks, either to paint in another layer above the layer I wish to color and clip it to that layer, or I like to use lock transparency, which allows me to paint only within the shapes I've already illustrated illustrated on that layer. And at this stage, using the color after I get all of my layers painted in, I like to try to establish a clear atmosphere with the colors I'm using. So coming in and adding a little more depth and um, different colors in each layer, adding a little green to that purple, adding a little gray and blue to that soft lavender of my ground cover and things to start giving it a little bit more detail and texture. Speaking of texture, uh, if you're looking to add a little more to your work, try using generative fill to create unique textures within Photoshop. One of the things I really love to do is to create a new layer uh, and type in a prompt that will give the kind of texture you're looking for. In my case, it was something along the lines of swirling colors and charcoal textures in the colors that resembled what I was going for in my color palette. So some purples, some mossy greens, some grays and things like that. This allowed me to come back in with clipping masks and apply those generative textures to each individual layer uh, with blending modes and clipping masks just to add a little bit more uh, of kind of an eerie vibe and atmosphere to the piece, a little bit more variation of color to each colored layer that I had rather than just flat colors sampled directly from my color palette. I think it adds a lot more fun atmosphere and a little bit more um, personality to the piece. So definitely check out that technique if you are looking to create a little bit more pizzazz for your piece. 
Once my scene is built out and I've got some good texture and color going on, I like to add some more atmospheric touches. Here I've taken a softer round brush and started to add a little bit of fog atmosphere in between all of the various layers of elements. I'm also using clipping masks again to add some of that light color from our moon in the background to the various bars of our gated fence here to give it a more feeling of belonging within the scene, like that light is hitting those bars. It's also hitting the tombstones, which I'm also using clipping masks to apply there. And then another thing you can do to really hit that home is I've just duplicated the layer of my fence and turned the saturation totally down, turned the darkness down and used transform tools to make a shadow for it. Then I'm coming in with the lasso tools, the polygonal lasso, tool to be exact and creating these spots of light almost as if the moonlight is peeking through all of the different bars. Um, I'm also coming through with some layer masks in effort to remove some of those major light points and adding some more shadows to kind of give this piece the feel that that light is interacting with more elements within the scene rather than just a large moon spot in the background there. Um, it kind of gives it a little bit more atmosphere like we've been trying to convey and makes everything that I've got going on in the scene look a little more cohesive. I also really wanted to add a character to this. So what I've done is just dropped in a solid color layer and turned the opacity down. Uh, so that I can start sketching in a character that might belong in this scene. Doing that with a large color layer allows me to kind of see my piece through the background so that I can keep an eye on the uh, concept that I've got going on already and make sure that my character looks like it belongs, but also not be distracted by all of that background uh, going on in the back so that I can really focus on my character. Similar to how I built out this scene, I do like to use large chunky brushes to build out large shapes. Sometimes I use the lasso tool to snag, you know, like his, his jacket, his head shape and start to add in those large blocky colors. Uh, and then sort of come in with a much smaller brush and refine what his outfit and the smaller details of his design looks like. adding in his arms and legs, his little hands, giving him a little bit of motion with the way he is sort of frolicking through this piece. Coming in with the lasso again to add a little bit more detail and then painting directly into my layers, either with that lasso or with clipping masks, giving his little pumpkin head, his little jack-o'-lantern head, a little bit of depth and kind of detailing and refining him so that he looks like he belongs in our scene. I'm also doing the same thing with the lighting on him as I did with the bars in the fence or gate, kind of adding a little bit of a rim light so that moonlight is hitting his clothing as well. And then just spending time kind of adding finer details to him. Once I've got my scene and my character all set up, adding fine, fine details, the tiny details, all of the little magic points in the scene really is all that's left here. I do come in with kind of a combination of a lot of the tools we've been using thus far, like uh, softer brushes that can suggest fog, uh, blending modes to kind of make certain light points pop, using the polygonal lasso tool to section off areas where I can paint in a little bit of light, um, and blending modes that can blend a lot of my different values in to create a more atmospheric scene um, is used here. I've got some spatter brushes that help me to suggest like fireflies in the scene floating around our little graveyard. And then lastly, I would say use some adjustment layers to kind of alter the uh, color of your scene and maybe an iris blur that can give it that final touch to zero the eye in on your focal point of your piece. That's all for now, folks. If you'd like to join me in the Choose Your Edit Challenge, don't forget to tag Photoshop on any social media accounts and use hashtag PSHalloween.